Ladies and gents, it has been about a month, maybe more, since I've done community games on the channel, and we're back, and we've got some community game action, and we've got some interesting storylines here. Now, I am going to actually just go to settings here and make big, make it big trees here, because I have the pine tree mod on, and let's face it, these trees just look prettier than that. Eight players, eight exploding kings, all right? So you could see Shulker's king is actually in this beautiful Mayan castle. Um, if that king were to die, there will be an explosion, which could destroy somebody else and of course these players are going to eventually talk to each other try and potentially form alliances or maybe just maybe the the alliances will not happen at all that does occasionally end up happening um so to start it all off we have long time uh, mod on my channel big map maker in my channel big help around the channel shocker's been around since the old days we're all so old right playing as the mayans here in the yellow uh in the green we've got cryptic xl who proudly proclaimed, I got into a community game the last three times I tried. Well, thank you for that, Cryptic. Everyone already says things are rigged, so that just makes things way worse. But uh, Cryptic is playing as the Celts here in the green. In the teal, we have, uh, I, I, I just say Pete. Um, we've got Pete playing as the Spanish. Spanish, a fantastic civilization for these settings. Uh, and Pete's been around a hot minute as well. In the gray... We have Techno Pirates playing as the Romans, kind of a new civilization. Could be interesting to see how the Romans play out. In the orange, we've got Just Sponge playing as the Bulgarians. Pretty late game civilization. So considering it's a community game, could potentially see some conics. God, this stresses me out, man. But while it does stress me out that someone's scouting with their king like that, if orange were to kill it, orange would die. Because the king would die, and then there would be an explosion, and orange would lose everything. So actually, it, it if anything, is safer to scout with the king in Exploding Kings than Standard. Because there's a big reason for people not to want to kill you. Uh, in the purple, we have Snippy in the house. One of the original legends in my videos. A Snippy with some epic snipes back in the day. And Snippy still goes into games, tries to kill people as quickly as possible. Having said that, I think the last time Snippy played, Snippy actually tried to go late game. But, like, keep an eye out for Snippy. I could see him returning to his old ways where he just tries to kill people quickly. It is actually very rare that Snippy wins. But it is common that Snippy will snipe people. Uh, in the red, we have Omni Shambles playing as the Dudes. And, guys, last but not least, we have a player who you think is Deals. But, no, here's the deal. This player is Sir Explosive Hopper, okay? Sir Explosive Hopper has been in many videos of mine, is in a legend video, has done well in Regicide Rumble, an event I do on occasion with Regicide and Prize Pool for Killing Kings. Sir Explosive Hopper changed his freaking name, man. I selected him, and I was like, wait a second, I don't see Hopper in the game, and I did Process of Elimination. Sir Explosive Hopper I, I either isn't in or let somebody else in. I believe just changed the Steam name. That is my guess. Wait, Hopper says, wait, what? That's not me. Wait, what? Hopper, wait, what? Hopper's in my chat says, wait, what? That's not me. Oh, I'm wrong then. Okay, fake news? Wait, I thought you got selected in the Discord. Hopper, did you not get selected? Did somebody change their Discord name to Sir Explosive Hopper? What happened? I was going to say, this doesn't look like your macro. I don't know what's happening here, but anyways, uh, maybe someone shared the information with somebody. But okay, I, I, I was incorrect. Never mind. Not Sir Explosive Hopper. We do not know how this person got in here. And, uh, you know, that we carry on, I suppose. Hold on, I gotta double check here. Didn't Discord say... I thought Discord said... Oh, it didn't say Hopper at all. I'm an idiot. It never said Hopper at all. It just said Snippy, and my, my brain went to Hopper. I'm sorry. Okay, I... Literally, the problem here is me. <laughs> the problem here is me. Blue... Blue's like one of this epic intro. I screwed it all up. I'm sorry. Python says it was Hopper before. I don't know what's happening. Anyways. No, it did say Hopper. They changed names. What? Okay, we need investigations then from somebody. Is someone screwing with the system? Is this Snippy? Let's not... Actually, no, no, no. Let's calm down. Let's not point fingers. Let's not point fingers, okay? I don't think you could change Discord names that fast. Could have sworn it said Hopper. Anyways, we've got some chat here, guys. Focus on the actual game. And Blue just said, are you here? And a couple people responded. Uh, Omni Shambles says it's quiet so far. Pete says there's too much stress. 
Cryptic says, I'm here physically, but not mentally. Got it. Omni Shambles reaches out to Blue. Says, hey, Blue, just to you. We are neighbors. Blue says to everyone, good to know. And Red says, shall we start? Start as we mean to go on and work together. Is this just to you, Red? Smiley face. If you can see it, then good. Smiley face. Okay, lots of smiles, lots of chatter between Blue and Red. People says you can change names instantly in the Discord. Yeah, so maybe somebody trolled us or something. I don't know. We'll look into it. Not a big deal. We're in the game. Right now, we have Blue and Red as the ultimate alliance. The Teuton Vikings Alliance. That's historical, right? I read a history book once. Actually, it might have been fantasy. I don't think that was actually real. Um, You know, on the other side, we got some people looking out for friendship as well, right? Techno Pirates is high neighbor in it to the end. I guess screw you to Orange then, because Orange is also technically a neighbor. And uh, there's been no response yet to Techno Pirate from Heat. Deal says this map is huge, only played 1v1. And then Omni Shambles. This is funny to me. Now, I could be painting this incorrectly, guys, but I think Omni Shambles is trying to determine how good the teammate is here. Omni Shambles says, have you been in comic games before? Loose's first time. I would die if Red now reaches out the purple or somebody else for friendship solely because Red's going to be like, oh, God, this person's complaining about the map. And then it's their first time. Like, well, I'm not good enough to win with somebody who is playing for their first time here. <laughs> Omni says, we have Snippy to my east. He is known for being aggressive. Oh, that's true. All right, so Omni's experienced enough to know that. If he kills me, he'll then come to kill you. Aha. Gray says, hi, Orange. Teal isn't talking to me, so I'll talk to you. In it together for now? What kind of crap is that, Techno Pirate? What, you're making it clear to Orange that Orange is plan B? Like, hey, uh, the girl I really had the hots for isn't into me, but I'll take you. What's that? That's not Diplo. You're just... You're starting off on the wrong foot here, Techno Pirate. Don't play... Don't tell them. Uh, Orange says, sure. Can you read that? And yeah. so they're trying to figure out... And Grace says, yes. Yeah. So I guess they're talking to each other now, but... And Orange does need a friend, but I cannot agree with that type of Diplo there. And Blue says, I will revenge you with my king. So Blue knows it's exploding kings. Again, guys, if the kings die, there is a massive explosion. Oh, wow. Look at this. Gray says, in it together for now, which is actually another horrible thing about what Gray just did. And Orange says, why not for now? Why not forever? Smiley face. Oh, why not forever? Gray says, I don't want to presume just in case up forever. Up for forever. Again, Gray has made it very clear that just sponge is not part of the long term plans here. Like, sure. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah, you know, just in case. So Snippy hasn't said a word. I bet you any money we're going to see petards starting to get made in this castle here in a second. Here's the overall eco setup. Uh, we'll just keep it on the top three for now. It's been a long time since we've done community games. Snippy usually is going to start making petards. Snippy's actually going to drop a TC. Okay, Snippy's changing, guys. Shocker doesn't chat much in most of these games. Uh, so Shocker, I don't foresee Shocker being very trusting of other people. Or chatty with other people. That's just something you kind of get used to with Shulker and Diplo games. Not a big Diplo fan. More of an objective-based guy. And Cryptic says, should we invite Teal since we are in the north corner? I guess Shulker did respond with a yes to someone earlier. And, uh, I mean, uh, just Sponge and Snippy looking to be the better players as far based on the eco setups. But we'll see what other factors come to play here. Zolato says, hi, T90. Forgot it was Kami game day. Uh, can't believe I arrived late from work. Well, welcome. Sorry you, you stayed at your job to earn a living wage. Welcome, welcome. And Red says, hi, Orange. Just to you. Okay. So they are leapfrogging Snippy. No one's even trying to talk to Snippy, really. Actually, I take that back. Orange, as I say that, says, how about in instead of sniping me, we play together? Smiley face. 
Now, the timing on this is kind of interesting because Red is now asking Orange, have you spoken to Purple? So that information may be shared. I'm going to remove the market events because these guys use the market way too much. Snippy has chatted to people in the past. And Red says, do you know who he is? Man, the, the amount of YouTube titles we can make from Red's typing so far is fantastic. And Just Sponge says, yeah, I am scared. And Red says, same, I have discussed with Blue. So they're all freaked out about dying to Snippy here, guys, because they know his reputation. Hmm. T90, will you organize a Diplo free-for-all game with big guys? With big guys? You mean like physically large? You talking? I assume you mean high elo, high rank pros. Uh, Regicide Rumble. We have four of them on YouTube. There will eventually be another Regicide Rumble. It's an actual event. But no, we do not have a weight requirement. We do not have a scale you need to step on in order to enter games. So it looks like we may have an alliance in the north here. Teal says, good idea, all three of us together. So basically, it seems like we're going to have yellow, green, and teal as a team. Blue and red as a team. It does feel like red wants to work with orange as well, but they have to deal with Snippy between them. And then gray says, have you been speaking to anyone else so far? Is it just me? Just to get a sense of alliances. Gray is now has found out that Red is also speaking to Orange. So like maybe Gray could be, you know, it seems like Gray and Orange could be an alliance. They could work with Red and Blue. Yes. No one has reached out to Snippy. Like I said, I I feel like it would be wise to reach out to Snippy and ask about alliance. Actually, no, I take that back. I think Orange did right. Orange tried. Snippy hasn't said a word. Snippy is the best boom in the game right now with forty nine villagers. So Snippy did receive an offer, but Snippy's just getting relics, bringing back the first relic now, and Snippy taking it to late game. And that is, like, Diplo 101 is you ally people and at least talk to some people. Even if you want to kill everybody, you gotta, you don't want to be seen as a threat. But honestly, I think Snippy's reputation does so much for him that he, he knows that even if he tries to speak to people, they may not trust him. Maybe that's what he's thinking. Uh, Bazerman, thank you for the 17 months. Redneck Chemist with 26. Says he's new. Awesome. Grateful Dave AoE. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> uh, thank you for the prime. Sobe Surfing Lizard. Another interesting name. Thank you. Appreciate love and support, Victor. Uh, Ventru and Huds, welcome back. Zico. First community games back on Twitch. Chat's a little bit more lively. We have had absolutely nothing happen in this game. Beyond Gray, <laughs> beyond Gray feeling turned down by Teal and then going over to Orange and saying, I guess I didn't really want to team with you, but I will. We could explain some of the walling from Orange, but Orange is just going for a full wall. I think for some extra little bit of safety here. We'll see. But again, here's the eco breakdown on the left side. The player who struggled the most has been Omni Shambles. And you now Omni Shambles on par with blue, to be honest. Can we attack? Okay, 30. I think that is blue saying, can we attack on 30? Orange says, sure. And red says, who? 30 minutes is pretty... That's pretty fast here. And blue says the pink, question mark. Yes. So you want to attack Snippy in six minutes. Good luck with that. Snippy's got a great eco. Snippy's getting relics everywhere. There's quite a few relics on this map. Red says yes, but not ready. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, I think it's important that if you have a team and you're going to attack, you do have a, a planned time to do it all together. I think setting a time is tricky, though, because if you just set that time and then one player's not ready, you might just be fighting on your own. Tools says, hey, T90, watching your content for four years. You're the best. Welcome, Tools. I'm going to castle drop him with my king as well. What? That'll do it. Okay, well then don't bring your teammates armies with you. <laughs> Red says, is that the best idea? Red's like, oh God, what person has I ever reached out to to be teamed with? 
And listen, if the king explodes, I think that is Blue saying, I'm happy to suicide myself for the team. But that explosion would kill potentially Red's eco, because it's close to this. And any army Red or Orange is going to send in there. And Red writing so much, he's falling behind in score. Well, think about it. The players who prioritize Diplo a lot are usually a little bit worse because they need the Diplo to survive. That's the beauty of Diplo games. If you have the super sweaty players, you don't chat at all. They eventually don't have friends later on. It's like nice balance. There are the rare talents, of course, that are like talented at everything and careful at everything. But generally speaking, the players who are top score are not chatting a lot. It's normally how things play out. Wong Obongo says, uh, just found you on YouTube, never played this game, but since, uh, but this content stands on its own. Yo, thank you, Wong Obongo. Your name stands on its own. Has quite a ring to it. So, I'm gonna switch over to the, to the army now, because this is where players start to make army. And I always have it so it's a top three, occasionally we'll switch to everything else. You can see the military there is not, not that high. I also think that monks count as military in that. So, like, yeah, there's, like, quite a few monks. Like, right now, relic count. Let's actually sort that. Nine relics for Pete here. About to be ten. Now, on a map with a lot of relics, you might not need alliances and trade as much. As I say that, we do have a market in the north for Pete. So Pete's going to plan on trading. Snippy in the Imperial Age. And Blue says, OMG, he is walling. I love this feel of, like, Snippy being the pro, Snippy being the player everyone needs to fear, and then the other players all talking about him. <laughs> Unbeknownst to Snippy. Red says, as am I. I like Omni Shambles. I think we need Omni Shambles in this game for a while, and it'll be a good one in terms of the chatter. You always need players like this. Players who are a bit on the weaker side, who like to chat it up. Cryptics, as people are arriving to Imp, going to ask about Thanksgiving. Maybe had a little bit too much to eat. And Cryptics says, so how was everyone's Thanksgiving if you're in the U.S.? Well, yes, this is the day after Thanksgiving, at least the day of recording. Uh, I happen to be from the U.S., Cryptics, so I will tell you. I ate too much, and I drank too much, and... I took a really long nap, and it was great. And, uh, oh god, Blue. Oh, Blue's crazy! So Blue declares war on Snippy before the army even gets there. So Blue's on the way, bringing the exploding king right now. Grace is not in the U.S. Happy Thanksgiving anyways. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Hope everyone had a good time with family and friends and food and, and whatnot. If you did celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, I posted on socials and even on YouTube and whatnot how thankful I am for the community, so... Even if you don't celebrate, it's a day of thanks. I appreciate it. Snippy's not going to expect this. This is crazy. I mean, if nothing else, we have to give Blue props for having really aggressive energy. But to bring the king into the battle is wild here. We'll drop a castle in between Snippy's walls. Snippy is definitely not expecting this. Snippy is in the Imperial Age, though, so could make trebuchets to take down that castle. So here comes blue. Notice how blue did this and like red and orange aren't really ready to help. Omni Shambles is asking all types of questions like why is your king there? And, and blue's just like a man on a mission here. I had asked people if they'd seen exploding kings before. For some people who are watching live, they will have never seen a king explode with this mod. Um, obviously quite a few videos with it. So, you know, you bring the king forward. Are you ready to actually use him, though? Was my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think the answer might be yes. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God, this is... <laughs> I just really don't have a lot of faith that Blue's going to be able to get very far. But, I mean, if the king dies, this snippy's screwed. Okay, Genoese crossbow are there to potentially deny this. Now, Snippy doesn't have any blacksmith upgrades yet, despite having elite Genoese. Snippy knows petards very well, so we'll deal with those petards. Hops into the castle. Treb is exposed. So, not Snippy's brightest moment. I don't think Snippy's used to this type of pressure. Snippy's used to being the player dishing out the pressure. So, and we talked about the potential for Trebs. Well, the Trebs go down. There's more Trebs on the way for Snippy. Blue says, I have no uh, idea what I am with a smiley face. 
And blue, I have no idea what the you're doing either. So it's all good. I mean, it's aggressive. It's fun. There's energy behind it. We got petards now. The king is still forward. Trebs are going to eventually come out. I imagine that blue might make trebs too. Obviously, more things happening elsewhere around the game. Uh, Cryptic says yellow, you ally with blue. And Shalker says I'm allied from the start with him, but that's it. And they're talking about maybe killing blue to secure that corner for trade. I think blue might end up killing himself here. Well, red says, hey, green and yellow, we can trade if you want. Blue is friendly, which is very timely that red said that because they were just talking about killing him. Gray and teal speak for the first time. And the player's a little stressed out right now because the community game makes sense. Snippy's got more upgrades for his Genoese. The Ram should not do enough here. Snippy's King is in this castle. If he were to ungarrison his, uh, like the units from this and accidentally send them forward into the castle fire, he could die. But he could die if Blue's King dies and there's an explosion here. It's a massive radius. This very much feels like a suicide mission. Like, So if this castle goes down, I think Blue will run forward with it. Or at the very least... Blue's just going to simply forget about it, and the rally point might be set forward from the Berserks and the Trebs. It took, I mean, not Snippy's most impressive defense ever, but it was always inevitable Snippy was going to defend from this. Like we said, like, Blue has friends, but Blue didn't coordinate any of this with the friends. And, oh, God. Blue's King. Oh, th thank God Snippy didn't have bracers. Blue's King going to go in for it? Yep, okay, GG to Blue. All right, folks, so this, there's a little countdown, right? You've got all these units that will just, like, show up and die. That is your countdown. That is your heads up to leave this place. Snippy is going to be in a whole world of hurt. But if Snippy can run, Snippy could maybe survive. Run with the king! I think Snippy will survive this, but watch what happens to Snippy's base here. Maybe Red gets affected by this as well. And say goodbye to all the things you worked for, Snippy. But the king still survives. So Snippy got a king snipe, but not in the way Snippy would have wanted, and that's going to set Snippy back a couple, couple hundred years, let's say. And the explosion happens. So Blue, I don't know what your deal was, but Blue really wanted to be aggressive here, and Snippy says T95. Snippy's like, this is fine. We've got the little, uh, you know, the little fine emote, which is the the classic dog in a burning room saying this is fine. Yes. So Snippy probably feels like, eh, it's alright. At least I survived. There's not much more Snippy can do there. If someone walks forward to his base with his king, there's not much more he can do. You gotta kill the king. You gotta kill the guy. Bad things happen. Now, Red is turned on Snippy, though. Now, you know, maybe if Snippy would have been a bit chattier with some people, things would be different, right? I think Orange had reached out to Snippy and Snippy never responded. Maybe Orange would support in some way. I respect Red for the Teutonic Knights. I'm not sure Teutonic Knights are the best choice against the Italian range units, though. The Snippy's going to have to reclaim all these relics and add more eco and build more castles. Thankfully, the relics are still there. We've got Elite Conic on the way for Orange. Conics would be much... Uh, it should be really strong. Uh, uh, still a bit questionable against Genoese, maybe, but the Conic's a good enough unit where it makes sense. And uh, salutes to Blue. Uh, for the energy behind the attack, I think you could make many arguments that maybe that wasn't the smartest way to play it to win the game. But if the goal was to damage Snippy and potentially help Red uh, and Orange, which Blue seemed intent on doing, it did help them. So, and it, it set Snippy back. Holy freaking walls here on this side. Um, trade is running through the middle of the map for Red. And seems to be running to Green's market. Now, it would make more sense to go to this market. Green's added more. The main trade route I'm noticing is from the north to the west. All down there towards Shulker's market. If you're the player that has that corner, everyone's trading with you, they will never want to turn on you because their trade is running through your base. Yes. Um, is, are those still there? I'll send Cav there to look. Snippy will probably get mad if you take them, by the way. I think they're talking about the relics. So they're all... Like, it's definitely the Northern Alliance. What colors is this? Like, the teal, green, yellow. The... It's not really water colors. The lighter colors? The... 
I, I don't know how to describe it, so let's just say north. All right? The northern team is very intent on seeing how the other things play out. The Gatorade colors. Well, there's a lot. <laughs> That's creative. I'm pretty sure there's a red and orange and a purple Gatorade. No. <laughs> I think north is probably the easier way to say it. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. Siege Onager on the way right now for Cryptics with Celts. That's crazy. Now, Snippy going to turn on Red. Red has been flirting with the idea of attacking Snippy for a bit here. Remember, we did establish earlier, while wow, Split Micro with the capes, Snippy needs to save his cannons, but we did establish earlier that Red might be one of the weaker players here. Does kill the cannons, but running, trying to run through a wall with the KP boys here is not working out for Omni Shambles. I mean, those archers are wrecking the Teutonic Knights. Snippy now, though, is going to be attacked by Orange, and Snippy just doesn't have friends. I'm not seeing a world where Snippy is going to win this game because everyone seems to lack trust in him. And Snippy also doesn't seem to have shown an interest in saying, yo, 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 guys, WTF. Like, hey, I'm nice. I'm reformed. Snippy has not tried that. I think that would need to happen. And Orange is coming in with Cav Archers and Conics. A fun army comp. Also the two-handed swordsman. They do have Beganes, so they've got lots of melee armor. Me melee armor not so helpful against ranged units. In fact, it's not helpful against ranged units at all. This is giving the players in the north time to talk about taking out Orange. And Teal offers that. And includes Gray in the conversation. Remember, Gray and Orange are supposedly friends. Hmm. And here come the, the trebuchets and the cav archers and the two-handed swordsmen. Snippy, if you're going to lose your king... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, just sponge, just research treason, and we actually got... Hold on, guys. I never asked Capture Age officially to make a change here. Watch this, though, for a second. Did you see that on the minimap? You see the blinking? Watch this. Treason gets researched? And look at the blinking of the kings on the minimap. We didn't have that a month ago. I think Capture Age updated with treason. That's super nice because now we'll know if people research treason. What's weird to me, though, is that Orange is allied with a lot of people. I don't think treason tells you where your allies' kings are. So I think Capture Age doesn't pick up on which one specifically it works for. In this case, it would have been for Snippy, right? But at least we have indicators when tree ser treason is researched. Wow, tree search. Uh, and that's pretty nice. Um, spies, of course, shows like the whole map. But treason does not show your allies' king location. And there's a lot of allies right now. Okay, so it's been tree searched. Uh, you know, Snippy was attacked before and damaged by Blue's king. Now it's on the full defensive mode and... Honestly, the way I see it, I think Orange and I think Red are going to get completely rolled by the North. They're so focused on Snippy, the others have just been trading and chilling. It would make a lot of sense that these players are going to have problems against the other team. The other team's just been chilling. They haven't had to work hard at all, and I'm sure their stockpile of resources, as you'll show on the bottom left, is insane. You've got 6k gold for Grey, who hasn't fought, 10k gold for Shulker, who hasn't fought, 12k for Teal, who hasn't fought... And they're still trying to coordinate things here. Like Red would have needed a teammate. Because Red is struggled compared to the others, at least with the eco side of things. Yeah. Eco's okay, actually, now that I say it, but. He's going for solely Teutonic Knights. Maybe a little too much style points here. But the Red's Red's a good team player. I think Red will be a really valuable ally. Right now, I think Red is mainly just a valuable ally to Orange, though. They're talking about going for Orange. So, Relics are going to be ejected from this monastery. Castle's going to go down. Lots of castles here from just Sponge. And Cav Archer, Two-Handed Swordsman, Conic will eventually do a pretty large dent in Snippy's force here. The Teutonic Knights are just chilling. Nice shot from Orange. Monks are ready to steal those Relics as well. And they are still having conversations about taking out Orange. And Orange is saying red attack. 
You remember that point in the game earlier where Techno Pirate said, I'll be friends with you, Orange, but like made it very clear that Orange wasn't the number one choice? Well, right now, Gray's not telling Orange that everyone's talking about killing him. And again, Treason was researched again by Just Sponge there, so we've got that. We didn't even have this before, the research Treason and revealed kings. So I'm glad we have that now. Thank you, Capture H, for that. If we could... My subs could use the T90 Zoom emote as a thanks. That'd be great. And Snippy says, if you're going to take me out, I'm not going down without a fight. I'm going to do the same thing Blue did to me. And if I'm going to die, I'm going to make sure that king dies right next to your base. Now, there's walls for Marge. I wish you could siege tower kings. I feel like that wouldn't affect competitive balance. And that should be something that they maybe do. Oh, God. Orange is actually... Orange is running from the north because Teal is coming in with the push. So if Snippy only knew this, if Snippy researched trees in here on the Snippy stockpile, Snippy does not have a castle anymore to research trees in. But if Snippy knew, there's an overchop! No! Okay, so Orange's king is right here. Orange garrisons to kill the king, but that's in your base. Your instincts have failed you. But I think you might have been screwed either way. Orange has to get out of here with the king. Orange is running to the right side. And there will be an explosion. And Orange will lose most of these castles. Most of these villagers. Everyone's trying to evacuate. The alarm bell has been sounded. But the boom's gonna happen anyways. And honestly, well played from Snippy there. If you're gonna go down, make use of the game mode. And that's exactly what happened. Explosion's just insane. What's important here, though, is that Orange still has a king. And so, like, what's kind of interesting is Gray is not the one attacking here. Uh, it is Teal and it is Green. And so Orange is now going to Gray and says, can I stay in your base? So Orange still thinks Gray is a pal. Um, Gray has just turned on Orange. And so maybe, you know, hearts have been broken here. But, but yeah, like, I would say you got to try and get to Gray's base here for your Orange because you're not going to survive any other in any other way. Okay, so Green did just say Gray enemied me, and oh god, I don't know, did Gray try that? <laughs> the, the Legionaries just got completely flattened. Here goes the King from Orange through the corridor. So far, this game diplomatically hasn't been that crazy. It's just been like, one team in the north is killing everybody. Blue obviously has been pretty nuts. Orange deletes the wall, Orange is making a move. This is to run to Gray. Gray is not allied anymore, and now the king dies. Now, Gray's king is here, guys. And Gray tells Green, sorry, I meant Gray. So, miss, I think that's a mistype as well. But just Sponge is out of the game. I do not think that Techno Pirate realizes this king has died here. And Techno Pirate, this is maybe what you get for making it so clear... That you were not truly going to be in love with Orange from the start. Orange had no issues doing that. You did not protect Orange. And Orange makes you pay the price. And the explosion works. Gray is now dead as well. Now this explosion should not damage anyone else. This is going to leave us with the three players in the north. And then poor Omni Shambles. But maybe a little bit of karma there from Gray. I, I don't think Gray meant to say it in such a rude way at the start. It's just kind of how I do my commentary. You know, I... I, I, I take things as far as I can. <laughs> so you guys know that I'm in danger meme from The Simpsons? The Chuckles, I'm in danger? That would be red right now. <laughs> uh, because they, like red, all of Red's teammates are dead. Anyone who ever talked to Red's dead. And the other three have pretty much been working together. And almost as if on cue, Green now turns on Omni Shambles. Now, I think what you should try and do here is you should try and talk your way out of this. And be like, like, speak to them and be like, hey, I'm a value to you. I can help you, whether that be information or resources. Or you could go for the pity card, which is like, oh, now that's not fun. You could be like, I'm a this elo player. I'm a that. I'm a that. You can try whatever, but like. You know, it's either that or you eventually fight and die because you're up against three players. And not only that, three players that are clearly a bit stronger, I think. And then, you know, you can use your king in some way uh, to still try and kill somebody. And I think that's what Red is going to try and do. 
But yeah, if you like, if this was a trillion dollar game for the winner, right? Let's say seventeen point nine trillion dollars to the winner, and you really didn't want to explode your king, right? You got to try and talk them down. Now teal says to green, "What do you do after red?" Shocker is pro. So this has arrived at that point of the game where, like, it's clear red's gonna die, and then this team that's been together, they're gonna have slowly break apart. So I think they're gonna try and like pick out the weakest link. Green says might need to be next about Shocker. I mean, Shocker will be completely screwed, I think, because ooh, Shocker must have spotted this with treason or maybe was able to just find it because Shocker knew what direction he ran, but Red is dead. Does Shocker know that he is next here? So, Red says, sure, pick on the little guy. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen Red say that while Red was still alive, but if things happen pretty fast here. GG to Red. Well played. Now, how long is this going to take? Now, again, if you research treason, it does not show your allies' king's locations. This is where, like, Cryptic and Pete have done the right thing. They've done the right thing to talk about this ahead of time, because now they're, like, they're clearly buddy-buddy. Shocker, I don't know if he's going to have it in him to try and make a move, especially being Mayans versus Celts. It seems impossible. But he clearly feels like he could die, so he's run to this corner. Uh, Tholt, thank you for the prime. Thank you, Lord Deals. I I think that Lord Deals is the player, actually. Thank you very much. Uh, Simba, Simba Boo Boo. <laughs> thank you, Hecky. Welcome back for 45. Thinnis, Zuvera, welcome. Rat God, Mateu. Lots of people in chat. This is the first uh, YouTube. I don't know if this is going to change anything for you. Uh, but uh, in case you didn't pick up on it, this is the first community game I've done since returning to Twitch to stream them. And a lot of people died very quickly in this one. We just hit the hour mark, and we've just got three people left. And I don't think Shulker's going to survive for very long either. Shulker, does he have a plan? Besides plumes. Seems like a whole lot of archers, no trebs. So I think maybe Shulker wasn't expecting it to get to this point by now. Here's the uh, the stockpile of resources. Shulker and Pete are in great spots there. Yes. By the way, I see people asking who killed who. Guys, if you look at this, it always shows you who killed who, right? So it's a gray king killed by orange. It's a purple king killed by orange, right? So it always will show you here. So you could see the red king was killed by yellow. The skull is in the color of the player who killed them. We can't see the cursor. You guys haven't seen my cursor this whole game? And nobody said anything? I'm sorry. One second. God, man. I swear, no one said a word? Do you guys not look at what I point at? Hold on. I think I'm going to make the cursor a bit bigger as well because it's harder for people to see on phones. I got to look into that. I can't believe you hadn't seen the cursor the whole time. There we go. See, cursor up here. All right. Jeez, man. All right. So, Shocker is like, listen, if there's three people left and no one's talking to you, you are next. <laughs> okay? You are next. I'm going to green. That indicator is not going to tell you where the king is. Right? Did they change it? Let me, let me double check. He already had vision in this area, which is kind of weird. Yeah, nothing, like, there's no ping. I don't know, I guess it's hard to tell with the way Capture It shows it. There's an X on the minimap when you're in the actual game. Greens is ready. I mean, Shulker has this castle, which has an arbalest in it, so I would be thinking it's probably there, because that's the safest area. So, we'll see how things play out. Yeah. And they say ready. And now Shulker just turns on Teal because Teal starts to attack. And I, I think, you know, to go for more memes, I think this is just a full on this is my life now moment from Shulker. And I think Shulker's going to try and defend. Now, options wise, the Mayans really struggle here. So, like Eagles, Halbs, Arbalest, Plumes. All good. Against the Spanish, it's maybe not too bad. Against the Celts, you're screwed. And Shulker says, till the end, huh? Yeah, they had talked about fighting till the end together. But, I mean, it's going to have to end at one point. 
Now, I had said, I say this every single time, guys, before the game starts. Wonder and Relic Victory is possible. So, actually, I think a good try from Shulker could be to drop a Wonder in the corner. And then that would be your only way to win from here. <gasps> oh, wait a second. Green was sending a small army to Teal because they know Shulker's going to die. And Teal notices. So there's trouble in paradise, folks. Wow, that was a sneaky move from Green to roll over here. I'm still... I, honestly, I think they might have changed how Treason works or something. Because Green went directly to this castle after researching Treason. And they were still allied at that point in time. But now it is essentially a free-for-all. Shulker's still going to have some massive problems. And Pete's is not smart. Now, then again, there's actually only one castle that has a flag. Funnily enough, in the castle is a conquistador. Behind the castle is a tower if you look hard enough. There is where the king is. But that helps Shulker's chances because the two, you know, the, the, the Celt and the Spanish player are now against each other. And if Mayans can sneak in with eagles, anything can happen. Let's just finish yellow first, says Teal. Who is the player that was attacked. And green says fine. Yeah, so I mean like... Honestly, props to, to Teal here for saying this. Because I, I could see someone being a little bit butthurt about the fact that they were attacked. I think they know this is probably going to happen anyways though. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Cryptix is trying to talk to Teal. The person that he just turned on. And this whole situation has distracted him from the fact that he's being attacked by Shocker. Teal's like, hey, change ally. Green's like, you first. They're going back and forth. What they need to do here, but the king is inside of that castle, and Shocker still has his king in the corner, and Green is very distracted from the action that he did to get Greedy to potentially win. Where will the king go? If it goes to Teal's base, this could give Shocker the win! Does Green know where it's going? Where was the rally point set? Oh, it's in this castle now. Okay, he's realized. He has realized. He just now picked up on the fact this was happening. And Shulker is just going to go for the king. I don't think Shulker is going to care about the Wood Raiders or the Halps. He just wants that king. He's bringing in the plumes as well now. This is a good move from Shulker. Shulker's really going for it here. If that king leaves the TC, it will get shot. Green's back in the castle, folks. Green's back in the castle. Does he try and run away again? Maybe he could run to the left now with the plumes looping. Oh, it goes into the TC. Oh, boy. This is pretty intense. Green obviously needs to get some army over here. Like, more and more road riders. They're slowly killing the eagles and slowly killing the plumes. Can Shulker do notice this? Like, you got to click it immediately. Your plumes are going to automatically fire on the military units because it's closer. Meanwhile, Paladin's are running into Shulker's base because his trade is opening gates. Oh, no. And Shulker's been looking here. He doesn't maybe know where the king is now. The king's actually in this TC now, so he did see that. Green cleans it up. Oh, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Poor Shulker! He was looking. Oh, now it's his turn! Oh, jeez, he was looking and focusing on trying to kill Green's king. Green survives. Shulker actually escapes as well now. And uh, he is going to be trapped from this side as well from Pete, so he's got to deal with that. Honestly, my salutes go out to everyone who's who's played this far. Teal did a great job, guys. Not dying to green sneaky push. A lot of players miss out on that. Green did a great job not dying to Shulker there. Just playing like musical chairs uh, or I don't know, some Duck Duck TC. I, I don't know. Shulker also could have easily died here. And then he's hopped into his castle and he's going to defend himself, so... The final three players have really put up some fight. And from what I remember with their stockpiles, the army counts are probably going to be pretty insane. Green's got 94 army at the moment. But listen, I'm going to tell you the problem now for Green, okay? The problem with Green is Teal no longer trusts you. And you should no longer trust Teal because you ruined that trust. So Green is in the middle. Which means if Green tries to make a move to kill Yellow... Green's got to send all the army this way. And then your focus is here. Your army is here. And then Teal could just hit you from the other side. So it was a good play, actually, from Green to try and take Teal. Because it felt inevitable at that point that Shulker would die to Celts in the 1v1. 
So that's how you could get the win, is you kill Teal when Teal's not expecting it, because Teal's your biggest threat. And then you take Shulker on your own. That did not happen, though. Uh, World Riders should do an amazing job against the Halps. Pointy Boys will go down. And again, as I said before, good overall game here. A game that both players, or all, all three players have played very well in. Mayan Eagles do have 100 HP, so it does offer more against the Wodes. I think armor upgrades are missing here. Am I wrong? I'm pretty sure Wode should have more armor than that. But anyways, the Wodes are going to eat anyways. Shulker's still actually trading this way, but now the trade is going down to Teal's Castle. And Teal has some trade carts running this direction. That's really smart. It's so actually going to Gray's Market still. And I don't think Green has any trade. Oh god, Shulker's going to try again here. Green is actually here. And they, actually, the tower's being attacked. Shulker has somehow been able to click the tower beyond the castle. Green's halves are there, protecting, and... I like, again, the attempts from Shulker. Like, this is what I always say about Diplo games. The worst you can do is go down without making a play, right? So whether that's sending your king into someone else's base to kill them with exploding kings or going for their king. The, the worst you can do is go down without trying anything. And everyone's really tried a lot here. And Shulker, I think, knows if he takes straight up fights, he will die. So he's just going to continue to make plays towards that, that king. I can't blame him. Now there's treason research. And Shulker, researching treason, will have told him that the king is indeed in there. Now, the players are going to hear the twang! The, it's not exactly how it sounds, but they're going to hear that noise. And actually, no, Shulker's making the play for green here. Again. Now, no plumes again. And green, <laughs> you freaking annoying. That's so funny. Green just goes whoop! Right into the castle. And I imagine it's going to go into the TCs. You really need range units. Whoop! There we go. <laughs> we know it's going to happen. Whoop! <laughs> if only kings were a bit slower. Oh, Shulker's waiting. He's like, come on, hop out. He tried to hop in front. And what? There we go again. <laughs> you know, this reminds me. Last time I was home with family, I was playing soccer with my seven-year-old nephew. And I just, he just like running for the ball and I just like move it slightly. Oh, he can't garrison. Green, you needed to repair the castle. The Eagles are on the move. But anyways, he comes in to take the ball. I just like slightly move it and he goes flying past me. That's what this reminds me of. He's just teasing the poor kid. That's part of what being an uncle's about though. Uh, Shulker is going to keep trying here, but that did not work out. And Teal has been making a move against him here. So again, it's just still 2v1, which is a big concern for poor Shulker. And he's hoping that he can kill someone here. Siege Onagers and Wode Raiders though, just simply too strong against the Mayans. The Shulker will kill all the Siege. Will not be able to kill that King, though. Again, well played from Green. Massive buildings here from Teal. And Teal bringing in Treb's Hand Cannons and Paladins. Okay. Will Shulker realize he's probably dead now and use his King as a weapon? I could still see him with these resources and the amount of units he's still creating. Wanting to have another go at sniping the King in a normal way. It's really hard when you played for an hour and 20 minutes to want to... To, to accept your death. No one wants to die, right? So it takes some guts, you know, to realize that you're, the end is near for you and you might as well do what you can anyways. And like, the thing is, Shulker kind of hates both of them right now. Both players have turned on him. So it's not like there's any one player in, in particular that he wants to take out and will be satisfied with. Yeah, unless you watch Blue this game, Blue is different. Blue is very comfortable with death. Uh, Eagles go in for the Trebs. Do not get everything, and Shulker's gonna make a wonder somewhere. Over here? Alright, guys, we just have to wait, like, another hour. I don't know where the Vils are. There we go. Shulker remembers its wonder and relic victory, so he is gonna walk across the map to build a wonder in what used to be Snippy's base. If you forgot about Snippy, so did I. It will distract from you losing this area, but... It's going to take a long time to complete that. And oh no, one freaking Wode Raider has tracked this whole group. This is the Wonder Ruiner right here. Alright. 
And remember, green and teal still have to be paranoid about each other because of what happened before. And the closer yellow gets to death, the more paranoid they have to get. Because players will try and look for timings. It says Shalker's king is threatened by Cryptic. I'm not seeing the king there, though. Where is it? Oh, 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 God. Actually, the Mayan king is so thin. I thought it was a Wode Raider. Look at him run. Dang, dude. King speed, Wode Raider speed. Oh, trade cards distract. Oh, God, it's just one Wode Raider. The king is slightly slower. This will be a problem for Shalker. And I don't think he realizes right now because of the stress of the situation elsewhere. And Shalker's going to be dead. F's in chat. We do have the T90 respects emote to pay respects to Shalker. He ends up third place this game. And it, you can see what he was thinking there. He's like, if I could save my king, build a wonder, maybe I can win that way. Didn't work out. And now Green and Teal just say good luck to each other. Of course, they've got to bring all that army home. But they did, in the end, end up working together. Well played to them. Explosion happens, by the way. It destroys some things which aren't very useful at this point. So, I think Shalker had a really good game. Like, his his multiple dives against green was good. A lesser player would have lost their king. And if he loses the king there, Teal could be affected by that as well. So, All right. So, you know, that wonder signifier is always going to be there at 0%. Capture Rage won't be able to get rid of that one for us. And as Godzilla Fries subs, thank you, Godzilla Fries. We are down to the final two. I think I would prefer the stockpile from Teal. Teal's got 35k gold. Spanish trade for you, and also all the relics. Green is zero on gold with 100 gold in the bank. So for Green, this needs to happen quickly. And Green's making the move! Again, players realizing their situation. I think Green knows. Like, I'm completely toast here. I'm completely toast if I, I don't get the king kill quickly. So the beauty of having the tower, though, guys, is that you could just set the rally point inside the castle. So it's really hard for the opponent to click the tower with everything. And then even if the tower goes down, the king could go directly into the castle. Did Teal get it right? Yeah, there you go. You see the see how it just shifted? And, you know, in the meanwhile, both your castles have gotten kills. Your paladins have gotten some kills. And Green's Wode Raiders are not going to be able to take that castle down. And Teal also making a massive push on this side. And Pete, who said he was super stressed at the start, has worked his way up to this point. Trebs and Rams and Hand Cannons and Paladinos. And I think Green's going to get smacked on both sides here. I think that was probably the moment for Green. Hand cannon's just like the perfect unit to have in here. Spanish gunpowder is so good. I love the combination of Siege as well, like Rams and Paladins. But Teal set up very wisely for the late game by keeping the trade alive and getting all the relics earlier. And of course, had a team. Like the only other real team in this game, the most aggressive player was hugely suicidal. <laughs> that was blue. Like, Red probably hoped that Blue was still alive at one point. Like, man, if only I had a teammate that hadn't ran his king into Snippy's base like that. Then it's like Blue and Red fighting together. Maybe Orange combined with things is... Maybe it offers a little bit more. Now, you can't, in a 1v1, go delete your king in someone's eco. Well, no, that's incorrect. You can, you're absolutely able to do that. What I mean by that is it doesn't lead to an explosion because the second there's one king remaining, the game is over. With these resources, I don't know how much stone Teal has. I guess Teal doesn't have a thousand stone. But it would be a pretty baller play if while you're winning, you also drop a wonder in your own base. But treason's been researched, which leads to Teal knowing where that king is. Actually, Teal sees everything. Wait, what? Is this spies? Or is this Capture Age bug? Kind of looks like Teal sees everything. Capture Age can be a bit weird with vision sometimes. It almost feels like maybe we had spies research. Which is 30k gold. Player does have um, 16k gold right now. And Cryptic is like... Uh, you know, my, I, I want to tell my mom I want a community game. I want mom to be proud of me. Sorry, was that too real? I don't know Cryptic's life. <laughs> I assume Cryptic's mother is already very proud of him. Um, 
But you know, like Cryptic doesn't want to resign. Cryptic's not a quitter, all right? So Cryptic still wants to fight on here, but I'm just not seeing it. Not trying to be negative here. <laughs> the joke in my head came off way less mean than, than it actually did out of my mouth. <laughs> And uh, that king is going to go down, and, and Cryptic didn't go down without a fight. Again, I think Cryptic's play earlier was really smart, too. And we'll see how things play out. Um, someone says it's capped at 30k gold. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware it is. I never saw him having upwards of 30k gold and then seeing that gold disappear here, but it's possible I missed it. And Teal just smiles at Green and says, Is this my first win? Surprise face. I'm going to assume Teal meant to say this is my first win. Surprised face. But now there's also a question mark. I don't know, Teal. <laughs> I know you played before. And maybe, maybe, oh, maybe Teal is like, can't believe it. Like, is this actually the moment? That's what, the, that's what that is. Now saying that to the enemy is a little rich. Green is running. Which would imply maybe Green has a desperation play planned. I'm not seeing it anywhere. Green Teal says, I got Spies. Okay, so Spies was actually in. And the game ends. And congratulations, Pete. Pete wins the game. Pete played very well this game. And like I said, I think like the big thing... The, the, the big thing you got to talk about with Pete here, beyond the eco, was realizing when Green went for that nifty little snipe here. That was actually very well timed from Green. Because Green and Teal were both talking together. They're buddies. They're like, hey, what you doing this weekend? You want to come over, have a couple beers? They were very much that vibe. And throughout that moment, you know, as they're planning to kill Yellow and making moves over there, Green snuck over quickly with some Kelt Trebs. They fire very quickly and some units. So Teal noticed that. Like, to still have your head on a swivel and notice you're going to be betrayed right there is huge. Because if Green gets that snipe, what probably happens is Cryptic ends up winning this game because we'll probably win the 1v1 with Shalker. So I thought it was a good game. Again, it was an interesting one diplomatically because like in the South, I feel like maybe players would have worked together a little bit more if Snippy wasn't like right smack dab in the middle of them. Uh, like if Snippy was in Blue's position, for example, I think things go very differently. But Red and Orange wanted to work together, but they just like, Gave up on ever being friends with Snippy and wanted to kill Snippy because of his reputation. I think the other kind of fun factor about that too was was the whole gray orange situation. Gray's probably gonna crack up when when they rewatch it, but like <laughs> Techno Pirate straight up reached out the teal. Teal didn't respond. And so then Gray goes to Orange. I was gonna be friends with Teal, but I guess I'll be friends with you. <laughs> and that that was like and I think even said, like, I'm not sure about friends forever, but maybe I'll think about it. it that's not exactly what was said. But that was there was just like a friend zone situation that went on there. And I think if anything, Techno Pirate's going to look back at this and say, man, if only I would have been a little less clear with my intentions with Orange, maybe Orange wouldn't have so freely blown me up. Tricky stuff. Um, here's the res collected, by the way. Here's the KD. And that's a, that's a crazy KD right there. Print this out and staple it to your wall here, Pete. You're never going to beat this in a community game. Wins the community game. 4 KD. 732 kills, 177 units de uh, dead. And then the trade was just massive. The trade gold collected, the relics collected. 27,000 gold from relics was awesome. Had 16 relics in the monasteries at the very end. Uh, very well played. Uh, Cryptic says, I wish Teal didn't see my snipe for him. I could have won against Mayans. Yep, yep, like I just said, right? It was a good play from you. Ultimately, I think you have to tip your hat to Teal. I think Teal also respect the play that you did, Green, because I think that was your best chance. That was awesome. Um, other thing, you know, just to end this uh, on, on kind of a fun note, I think I could, I could say this to him without being upset. He's been around a long time. Snippy, we had a three-minute spec delay, and even though everyone and their mother knew you were going to die, you came into my chat and you were like GG or something before you died, okay? So, let that be, you know, an example for anyone who gets selected for games, all right? We use the delay because we don't want spoilers and we want it to be fair and reasonable. So, if anybody dies, just, you know, keep those emotions to yourself for a couple minutes, please. Again, it was like the biggest spoiler in the world. No one saw it coming. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, just, you know, using Snippy as an example in the future, please avoid doing so, all right? 